Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Love and Reality Podcast. I am your host, Ricky Valera. On today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down the season finale, the wedding episode of Love is Blind, season seven. It has been a whirlwind of a season. And just to kind of recap where we started, uh, first things first, there might be a little bit of background noise going on. I am actually currently in Los Angeles getting ready to cover a bunch of film movies at the AFI Festival. So if it's a little noisy, I do apologize in advance because I am outside, I am in LA, and it's definitely crazy out here. But this season, we have seen a whirlwind of emotions, whirlwind of feeling, whirlwind of things, some of the most controversial things about people on and off the cast, what's true, what isn't true, and we started with seven, right? We started with seven in the pods in episodes one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we had so many different couples. We had love triangles. We had madness. We had craziness. We had the Brittany and Leo situation, which was, which still stands was as one of my most favorite, interesting things that have happened in Love is Blind history. Because when you watch the season back, right? I know the producer said that they were like, oh, well, we didn't we only bring so many people. We only have a certain budget for so many people, which makes plenty of sense. But watching some of these couples unpack over a course of period of time, you can't tell me that these two would not have been at least interesting to follow into Cabo. Right. Because when we get to Cabo, it's a different level of a relationship. And because of that, you're watching the show. And yeah, you know, there's the element of us that love watching the show based on the fact that these people are finding love. And then there's the other element of it that we're watching because we just want to see the drama. And it's been a mixed balance of goods across the board. So <clears throat> Brittany and Leo not going to the altar or not even making to the next phases. And then, of course, if you follow along everywhere on social media, the two went to Miami. They had a couple of dates. They were down there for a little bit. They decided things didn't work out the way they that weren't, um, shockingly enough, things didn't work out the same, work out at all in Miami, leading to them, of course, going their separate ways. Now, obviously, I do know that they're going to be at the reunion. The reunion episode has already aired. It's going to be airing on October 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm very, very interested to see a lot of the things that unfold. I have heard a lot of chatter of what goes down, and I cannot wait to explore that with all of you. And then our next couple, let's let's talk couple by couple here before we get into what goes down to the uh, wedding episode. So then we have a little meat to the bone before we get there. But then, of course, we had uh, Stephen and Monica, um, a couple that was interesting in the pods. These two had an interesting dynamic that I felt like it worked, but it shouldn't have. But then when you get out to the real world, it, you realize that it didn't work a whole lot. When you start to unpack some of the things that you've read online about Steven, you realize this man was really probably going on these this show for all of the wrong re reasons, right? He reminds me more and more of like Matthew, who was trying to pitch this idea to AD that it was going to be the greatest thing ever. America was going to love them, except for he didn't say that many words, right? So for me, you know, as you watch it, you know, she was asking, hey, can you just buy me some freaking flowers? And he was like, you know, I'm a broke ass. And then, of course, this all led to the infamous now infamous scene where we see her say, you know, he sends out a couple text messages when he's on this quote unquote sleep study that said, you know, sent out some kinky, te kinky text messages, um, which, of course, was not OK, considering that he is, in fact, engaged to be married um, during this quote unquote sleep study that Monica found on his phone. And then once she found him on his phone, obviously the two break up, which led to the monumental moment of, yeah, better Venmo me some money for me carrying the weight around over your last few days. She did that. It was, we found out that it was $400 for the few days that she kind of carried that weight while they were there on top. And then, then after that, we had um, the most strange couple, I think you could say, one of the strangest couples um, in Love is Blind history of Tim and Alex. Let's be clear. These two in the pods, fantastic. Okay. Outside the pods, abysmal. When they were in Cabo, I feel like they should have just broke it off there. Should have just broke it off there. We could have moved on. We could have not even worried about these guys. Because these, are, these two were so hot and cold. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. 
and it never really came to fruition. Now, if you've followed along off, off screen, we've seen Tim rant and rave all over the internet about people calling him out, people saying he was triggering, people saying this and that. He tried to post some receipts talking about how uh, Alex was just not, uh, she wasn't engaging, she didn't really want to be there. And then, of course, you know, Alex kind of posted some things that that I thought were interesting in this scenario. Let me see. Let me read some of the things that she said. Um, what was going through your mind when Tim sat you down for the breakup conversation? It didn't seem like you were expecting it. She's like, I was so hungry and the food was so good. I thought we were going to go into discussion about how the whole week has been. And when his tone changed, he was like, I want, just want you to sit down in front of me. That's when I knew things were off. But we had multiple discussions where I might be at the kitchen table. He's on the couch and he's in the bathroom. I'm sitting on the bed. So when he asked me to look him in the face and talk to him, I'm like, okay, I don't know what's happening. Right? Um, he also, She also talked about the nap after the parent situation. Yeah, I was with family all that day. We we're both were. And we had a, we even had lunch. I was really great. It was a really great day. I was exhausted. Had somewhere to, I had to be later that evening. The day before, being with the family, it was very emotional. I went to dinner with him after that. We were out pretty late that night. Then meeting his family, I was with them for a significant amount of time. You want to be present and engaging, so it's a lot of energy. Uh, it's it's a lot, you know what I mean? And she's like, one thing that was left out is Tim actually went to the store, so I went to take a nap, and his parents were downstairs watching TV. They had driven 10 hours the day before, so they weren't just in and out. They were going to be there for a few days. I told them, hey, it was my pleasure meeting you. I'll see you tomorrow. I do have to be somewhere to be, but before I go, I'm just going to take a quick nap before I get on the road. That was the conversation they were not upset. She talked about how she broke the news to her dad when the engagement ended. I called him first, and then I went to his house the next day and told him everything. He was angry, but he was also kind of sad. You know, we were really excited. He had told a lot of the family members and said, okay, we need to make sure it's this day. And then it's like, hey, this isn't actually happening at all. Her dad was pretty upset. Um, she kind of unpacked him that it was pretty unfortunate to see Tim post on social media over and over and over again about um, – what happened? And then, of course, the thing about the physicality, it actually wasn't physical at all. It wasn't that I physically covered his mouth. It was kind of like an emotion, just de-escalating the situation. So we understand that his voice was turning into yelling. I was trying to calm him down because sometimes people aren't aware of their tone. So that was definitely interesting to kind of see her side of the story. And we're going to see probably more of that unfold at the reunion. And then, of course, we had Tim. Oh, I'm sorry. We have who else broke up here? We had Nick and Hannah, two folks that didn't seem like they need to be married or together from the beginning. There's a lot of things that happen at the reunion that I can't talk about quite yet, but I've heard some juicy details about this. I've seen a lot, a lot of hatred towards um, Hannah on the internet. There's a lot of people chitter chattering about what unfolded with her, her demeanor. And she's even said in a couple of interviews, she's apologized for what she did, how she did it, how she talked to him and stuff like that. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see the growth there. And then after all of this, this leaves us with three. Marissa Ramses, Taylor Garrett, Ashley and Tyler heading into the wedding episode. And here we go. We kick right off with Marissa's. Marissa and Ramses are talking and she is pleading with him, saying she would marry him. Last night, he spoke to a few people and talked about the decision. He learned that his ex was hurting a lot post-divorce. He thinks it might end up hurting. He might end up hurting her. I don't understand why did this dude come on the show if he wasn't ready for marriage? He said there are certain things you can't get around. Yeah, what wearing condoms, the military. She's trying to understand his side of things and giving him space. Like this is kind of baffling to me. Ramses fumbled the bag massively. The men on the show have fumbled so badly, so 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 badly. It's quite embarrassing. He said his feelings are telling him to move forward. He said he just feels like he said he feels like he was brushing things aside. She wants to know what the big what the big deal is or not. She wants to know, hey, what's going on? Why is this happening? He said it's all it's, he said it's about her energy and his energy is ex existing and isn't in the same space. Is that her is her energy too much for him? Like that's, I think that's what it was. I think it's exactly that. His energy was her energy was very yeah. high. And she did a lot. She liked doing a lot. But she was also going through so much in this process here, right? He said he doesn't want her to think it's her, but he is literally telling her it is her. She said, I don't think you could have, you should have come through this experience. Exactly. Like, tell him. Marissa said she felt so sure and finally gave herself 100%. She wanted someone to choose her. She said it's the worst day of her life. 
she hugs him and said and asks, Are you sure? He said, I'm so sorry. And she was sobbing. And she's like sobbing. And I and, and ask him again, are you sure? Like ask him again. And she said, How did you become so unsure so fast? How come you're so, so unsure so fast? She said it was the worst heartbreak she's ever experienced in her life. Like I I wanted to give her a hug in this moment. Like I truly like what happened? She tells the camera she feels like she's dying inside. My heart pours out for her. Two days, two days ago, they were excited about they gonna get married. They picked their first dance song out, and then it's just tumbled all down. She called her mom. She's heartbroken. She said, "Mom, it hurts so bad." This is by far one of the worst breakups I think we've seen in Love Is Blind history. It was, it was hard to watch. Like it was, it was physically hard to watch Marissa just break down the way that she did I, I was genuinely blown away I, w I really was I was genuinely blown away uh, we have a couple of bachelor parties or whatever the night before nothing too grand because um, obviously we only have two people but because of that you know what I mean we had Tyler and Garrett they played basketball at halftime Tyler beat Garrett pretty badly Tyler beat the mascot um, let's see here the girls had a party as well and then it's Ashley and Tyler's wedding day. Tyler sent her a little sweet letter. He said he's going to uh, he's going to the baby making stages. I mean, his voice says they know he's in love. I really love these two, and understand that there have been a lot of things going on in the media that I won't mention too much. But obviously, you know they're going to have to weather the storm, and we're, they're going to go through stuff in this relationship, and it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Especially knowing what we know now, what happens at the reunion between these two. Um, Tyler's a little bit nervous ahead of the wedding. Um, her dad says she he is she is so proud of her. He is so proud of her. He's going to make her cry. They thrive and enjoy on the positive side. It's the bad weather that makes you appreciate the good weather. Um, her dad's a gem, right? You know what I mean. Her dad's a complete gem, and it's crazy. He's like, when when it gets bad, just know that there's bright skies after the rain, and it's almost poetic that we see this moment. It's almost poetic that we see them have that conversation the way that they do because of what happens and kind of what's unfolded off screen, right? It's crazy. You know what I mean? Is it not? Um, as she walks down the aisle, Tyler had tears running down his face. Obviously they both have their vows and I feel like I'm living my own fairy tale. Uh, he says, I do. She says, I do. Um, her shoes on the bottom of him said I do, which I thought was hilarious. And he got jokingly says, I wish you I wish you would have shown me those earlier, which is kind of funny. And then of course, those two lock in, lock it down. Now, <clears throat> Gary and Tyler, I wasn't 100 percent positive. This is one that I was like 80, 20, 90, 10, 70, 30. Then the text message situation, 60, 40. Which let me speak on this. The text messaging thing was very much justified. He lied about what he said in the text messages. He lied about the scenario. He lied. What she said, how she handled it, was perfectly justifiable. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's the hospital that Taylor was born at. Gave her a little honky, uh, hanky from when she was born to be something old, which was so damn adorable. I really like these two a lot. Garrett and Taylor's dad have a great one-on-one -on -one chat, which absolutely is adorable. He said, you have more than my blessing. If you ever need anything, we are there. Like you can't, like you can't stop. Like, like come on, you know what I mean? Uh, Taylor looks absolutely stunning, stunning in her wedding dress. Her parents got her parents got married on the thirteenth. It's the thirteenth now. Super cute little correlation there. She says sometimes you have to jump and hope that Garrett catches her. I just yep. Her mom said her little girl is getting married to a great guy. Little group hug, group hug. And I was in tears, uh, waiting for his parents to arrive. His parents got married on the 13th, too. So it was a nice little correlation. The 13, 13, 13. Her dad is about to walk her down the aisle. So this is the biggest day of your life. It is the fourth quarter. Adorable moment. They both wrote rap vows, which, again, in Love is Blind history doesn't really mean anything, right? Um, their, their vows are really super dorky. And so them, and I loved it. She said, I really caught the big fish and it was just like he says I do well he's absolutely do and she said I do without any hesitation I'm rooting for those two they are just oh it's just that uh, 
just a couple that maybe shouldn't work, but works. And I, and I'm just so happy for them. So happy. It's a nice little bow for the season before the reunion. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you want to see at the reunion? What do you want to see unfold? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we'll be back next week to talk about this explosive reunion.